of you who don't know me, my name is Congresswoman Lucy McBath, and I am the mother of Jordan Davis. I'm here today because of Jordan, of my son. Because just like so many Americans going about their lives, my son was ripped away from me by an unprovoked man with a gun for simply playing loud music in his car. And since that evening on Black, Fly Black Friday 2012, every tragedy of gun violence has been a painful reminder that the same violence that took my son has been replaying across the country with casual callousness and despicable frequency. We are here today to advocate for the nationwide reform that we need to end our reckless gun laws. For the legacies of those that were taken from us. And for the tens of thousands of Americans that we have lost, whose spirits are still with us today. We are a part of a growing movement across this country of parents, of students, of mothers, of fathers, of sisters, of brothers, and survivors who will not be ignored. voices have been strengthened by our passion, the passion that we have for our communities and our drive to make sure that we do not live in fear of this violence in our country. As the voices of our movement continue to grow louder, together we are impossible and unstoppable, but um, pass, impossible to ignore. Across this country, those who have turned a blind eye to the misery in the tears of our mothers, the cries of our children in their classrooms, and the uneasy fears in our grocery stores, they are hearing our demands. can no longer escape the growing volume of our outcry. And as I look around this crowd, I see the faces of many more survivors like me. In our present circumstances, how could anyone not be heartbroken by the tone deafness of those in Congress who look away even after they took an oath to serve and protect us. How many more parents, students, families, and survivors must be forced to join this club that no one needs to be a part of before we realize that the time for gun safety reform is long overdue. We are paying the price for weapons of war in our communities with phone calls to mothers and fathers who choke back tears and anguish and sink to their knees as their agony overwhelms them when the tragedy reaches them as it reached me. These are phone calls every parent feared. And it was the same call that I received after my son Jordan was murdered. It is a singular fear. It is a primal fear. A love so deep for our children that we worry, is my child okay? Where is my child? Will my child make it home today? 
America cannot be a nation where this fear paralyzes us from living out the fullest extent of our lives. Parents should not have to send their kids off in dread that this goodbye may be their last. Students should not have to imagine a day at school where a lockdown ceases to be a drill for their safety and becomes the horrific event they fear most, an active shooter. Our schools and places of community should not have to reckon with the threat of dangerous individuals assaulting our very way of life. We cannot be a nation where tragedy erupts on Tuesday and the victim's stories, misery and heartbreak are forgotten on Wednesday. After this tragedy happened in my life, I made a promise to my son Jordan. I made a promise to my family and to this community, to every single one of you, my family, that I would do whatever it takes to put an end to this violent gun epidemic. And nearly 10 years after I made this decision to spend the rest of my life fighting for this promise, I'm proud to share that my red flag bill that gives courts the tools it needs to keep weapons away from individuals at risk has passed the House this week. the most comprehensive gun reform bill of our time, the Protecting Our Kids Act, has also passed the House this week. These bills are our movement. They are your movement. The students of March for Our Lives have been fighting for, and these are policies that we know will save lives. Save your lives. We are on the precipice of a safer nation. I promise you that. I know it doesn't look like it, but I promise you, with every breath in my body, we will get there. And I urge all of us to continue this fight as these bills make their way to the Senate. And that is who we target, the Senate. We know that this fight doesn't simply end with just these policies and just these measures. It ends when we have every assurance that our loved ones, our children, and our families will live in their communities free from unnecessary gun violence. March for our lives. Thank you for being a face of this movement. Thank you for your strength and your courage and your tireless effort to protect your future generations. Your voices are critical and they are vital. We cannot win this fight without you. And I am honored to march with you on the front lines as we all march for 